Hello everyone, welcome to Geeks for Geeks. My name is Anubhav Madhav and in this video tutorial, we are going to see that how can we create a login system using Django, which is a Python web framework and that too in a very easy, fast and simplest way. In this web application, user will be able to register on a website and then user will also receive a confirmation email in order to activate their account and then they can log in to a system at any time. As we are going to focus more on the backend, therefore we will be making use of a very simple HTML based frontend. You all can modify your frontend according to your desire or needs anytime. So first, let's have a look at the demo on working of the login system which we are going to develop in this video. So here we are at the home page of our web app. So when the user will visit our website, they'll click on the sign up button and the form for user registration will open. Let's say I'll create a username ANU. My first name Anubhav, last name Madhav. I'll enter an email. For registration, I'll create a password. Let's say one two three, one two three. And I'll click on sign, and you can see that it says your account has been created successfully. Please check your email to confirm your email address in order to activate your account. Now I'll go and open my Gmail of the email I entered. And here I can see that I have received an email. First one is. A welcome email for just a welcome message the hello on above the username which the user will enter on the website welcome to GFC thank you for visiting the website we have also sent you a confirmation email please change, please confirm your email address now I'll go and check for the other email sent by the app which is welcome to GFC Django login hello on above the first name of the user please confirm your email by clicking on the following link and now I'll click on this link and here you can see that your account has been activated and now I am redirected on a page to login which is sign in now I'll enter my username again which was Anu ENU and the password 1 2 3 now I'll click on login and here you can see that I am successfully logged in which also displays my first name therefore it is a message that yes we are successfully logged in and as we are logged in now our app shows us a button to sign out and when I click on sign out it chase logged out successfully. Let's say I'll sign up once again with the same username and the same name. Well, the, uh, the first and last name of any two persons can match, but the email cannot. So if I enter some different email this time, but the same username, let's see what happens. And I click on sign up. It will say that username already exists. Please try some other username. So I'll try some other username this time. Let's say Anu123. Or let's say Anu at the rate123, which uses a special character. Let's say the name is Anupa, Madhav, and ABC at the rate gmail.com, 1234, Click on sign up and it will say username must be alphanumeric. So basically, a web app checks for many such conditions. Now let's say I'll enter everything correctly this time. I'll enter Anu123. First name is Anubhav. Second name is Madhav. Email. Now I'll create a password. Click on sign. Here you can see that we have received a message that your account has been created successfully. Please check your email to confirm your email address. But this time I won't confirm this email address. And now let's have a look at our admin panel. So I'll type in here admin, enter, I'll enter my admin credentials which is also known as super user which is this for now and login. Here I will like to see that what all users are logged into my web app. I'll click on users and here I can see that it is a super user named Anubhav which is myself, the admin. Here you can see that super user status is checked so that means this is the admin. I'll check for this, this email which is active which means the email which I confirmed for the first time and now it is active and this one which I haven't confirmed yet we can see that it isn't active yet. Also we can see the last time some user logged in so the date and the last time when the user logged in we can see all such things. Actually creating email confirmation feature in your website or your web app is a good practice 
It also saves your data and time for execution a lot. As there can be some users who intentionally enter wrong email address and this may even crash your web app if you haven't handled exceptions correctly. So it is better to have an email confirmation feature in a web app always. And implementing that too is very very easy. Well, this was a demo and this is the kind of web app which we are going to develop in this video. So without any further ado, let's go. The prerequisites. Well, for this you should just have basic knowledge of Python and nothing else. And the requirements that your device or laptop or desktop should have Python installed in it. And if you have not installed it, you can install it from this URL. And don't forget to add Python to the path in your environment variables. If you don't know that how to do that, you can refer to one of our blogs. And the next steps which we are going to follow is, first we will install the virtual environment. It is optional but recommended. It is just for our comfort. And especially if we go to deploy our websites, then it will help us a lot to make requirements file accordingly. And then we'll create a Django project. Then we'll create a Django app and then we'll start with the development. Here are some commands which we are going to follow in this video tutorial, which is for installing, creating and activating virtual environment, creating a Django project and app, and then creating a super user or admin. Okay. So now let's start with the development. What I'll first do is I'll create a folder named let's say GFG. And I'll open my command prompt. I'll cd to my desktop, that is change directory to my desktop. I'll then cd to this folder, cd gfg. And now what we're going to do is, that first we will install virtual environment. And for that the command is pip install virtual env. And then press enter. Well, I have already installed virtual environment in my PC. So it will just take it from the caches. For you it may take some time. Okay, now we have installed the virtual environment in our PC. Now the next step is to create the virtual environment. For that the command is virtual env and then the name of the virtual environment. We can name it anything. For now I am naming it as venv and then press enter. This will create a virtual environment for us so that whatever the libraries which we are going to use in a project will be stored in this virtual environment and not exactly in a PC. Okay, our virtual environment is created. Now in order to activate virtual environment in Windows, the command is venv backslash scripts slash activate and then press enter. Now you can see here that we have virtual environment activated and the commands for Mac and Linux is source name of the virtual environment slash bin slash activate. Okay, so first thing which we are going to do is we'll install Django. For that command is pip install Django. As you can see this is successfully installed Django in my virtual environment, not in my system. You can use any text editor. I am using Visual Studio Code for this video tutorial and to open this the command is code dot dot means current directory so it will open my visual studio code in the current directory and then press enter as you can see that my visual studio code has been opened in the directory mentioned and we can also see the files of the virtual environment close this and now the next step is that we'll create a django project the command for creating a django project is django admin start project and then the project name so we'll type in django dash admin start project and let's name the project as gfg okay press enter now we can see that our project is successfully created and now i'll open this folder and a good practice which is followed by many developers is to cut these two files in folders and paste it over here so that your project directory also lies in the root directory. That's it. Now we will create a Django app. For that command is python manage.py start app and then the name of the app. So we'll type in the command python manage.py start app and then the name of the app. Let's name it as authentication. 
so this is now successfully created an app for me named authentication now the very first thing to do is to open the urls.py file of the Django project and we'll create a path comma include app name.urls and our app name is authentication dot urls then place a comma over here and we have not included include so we'll type in here include and as we can see that our app do not have any urls file over here but we have mentioned it so uh, we'll click on this click on new file urls.py and then press enter but it is empty for now so we'll just go here we'll copy this code and paste it in our urls.py we'll remove these things and here we will set urls for our app so the first url which i would like to set is for the home page so i'll type in path comma let's say views dot home comma name is equal to home and then place a comma so now we will open our views dot py and we will create a function named as home as we have mentioned over here that the name of a function is home it means that when the user will request for this url which is the nothing after the domain of the website we will call a function home and here we will type in a function that how will it work we will pass a request to the function and then for now i am just returning a http response which says hello i am working as we have made use of this http response we also have to import it for that we will write in from django.http import http response in our urls or py of the app we will also include our views for that we will type in from dot import views and then save it now we will try running a server for that we will type in the command python manage dot py run server and now our server is running on the development server which is the url this we will copy this we will open our browser and we will paste this url over here and then press enter and now we can see that it is returning a http response which says hello i am working so that means our django app is working perfectly now before diving directly into the login system let me first tell you that how our django app works so first thing when you deploy a django website or even run it on a local host so Django first search for a file called settings.py and then it will check that what all settings are you using for your app so the app will run accordingly and then it checks for the URLs of the project now you can see that for this URL we have included the URLs of the app named authentication so in the authentication app it will go in the URLs it will again search for this URL and according to that URL it will run that function and our function which is written over here returns a HTTP response which says hello I am working so that's how a Django app works and if you're making use of some models or database over here then it again goes to models.py after there and then returns a response accordingly to your views and then your views may return either a HTTP response or enter a HTML template okay so now for login system what we need is basically a home page which we already have next thing which I would like to have is a sign up page where user can sign up and register their details so I'll create a URL for sign up which is something like this I'll name the function as sign up and name this URL as sign up too similarly I'll have it for sign in so I'll just press ctrl plus c and then press ctrl plus v over here then ctrl c and control V again well now I'm going to tell you a shortcut which you might not be knowing or might be knowing about the Visual Studio code so if I want to change sign up to sign in I'll click here and then again I'll press left alt and then click here 
and I'll keep pressing left alt and then I'll click here and now I'll press my backspace and instead of sign up I'll just put in sign in and see how easy that is let's see if you have to make same changes at 10 places so this can help you by saving your time and similarly for this I'll click here press alt click here press alt and click here I'll write in sign out as simple as that now we'll write functions for these three for sign up let's say if sign up we'll pass in request and here for now I'll just return a HTML template for that I'll write in return render we'll pass in request comma name of the app which is authentication slash and the name of the HTML page which is sign up dot HTML we haven't created that HTML template yet but we'll do it soon similarly I'll just copy it and do the same thing for sign in and sign out sign in I'll write in sign in over here and sign out well we don't need to render any template for sign out so I'll just type in here pass simple now the next thing is to create HTML template for the app for that what we will do is I'll just close all these so that it won't confuse you I'll create a folder over here named templates and then again inside that folder I'll create a folder named with the app which is authentication inside that authentication folder I'll create a new file let's say index.html and one more file which is signup.html and again one more file which is signin.html and also in our function home we can render index.html instead of passing a HTTP response we type in application slash index.html simple so now let's create templates for our app in order to save time I'll not focus more on the front end so I'll just make use of a HTML5 boilerplate and here let's say we'll type in the title of the app as authentication and now I'll remove this let's say we'll display a heading which says welcome to our app for now let's say welcome to geeks for geeks and then I would like to have a button so when the user clicks on this button they'll be redirected to the sign up page so the type of the button will be submit and let's name it as sign up similarly I'll do it for sign in and one more button for sign out okay now next thing which we are supposed to do is that we need to tell Django that what is the directory of templates which we are going to use so what we will do is we will open settings.py we will search for templates and here in the directories we will type in templates simple and now you can see that the server is still running we will go to a browser type in the URL and press enter now you can see that the HTML template for the index is rendered but when I click on these buttons nothing is happening so what are we supposed to do is that we need to give these buttons the URLs of the functions written for them so for that we open index.html we'll type space and we'll, I'll type up here a which is an anchor tag I'll cut this here and paste it here and I'll pass the URL for this as slash sign up this should match exactly as that in the URLs so similarly for sign in I'll copy this from here paste it here paste it again and instead of sign up sign in instead of sign up sign out sign in and sign up ok so let's see that what is a function for sign up doing it is doing nothing but rendering a signup.html template which we haven't made yet let's work on signup.html I'll again use html5 boilerplate I'll remove this 
and here I'll write the heading sign up. Let's see whether it is working or not. I'll refresh it, I'll click on sign up and it is working. So now the next thing which we are going to do is that we'll create a form so that the user when fills the form will be able to register to our website. For that I'll type here form. Inside that form I'll put a label name to username and then I'll take an input of type is equal to text for which id is equal to username and then name is equal to username and then I'll mention a placeholder which says create a username And in the app, we are going to use only letters and numbers for the username. Only letters and numbers. And then I'll make this field as required. Similarly, I'll just copy these two things and then paste it for the first name, the last name of the user, the email of the user, the password of the user, and then to confirm the password of the user. So let's change it accordingly. This is first name. This is last name. This is email address. This is going to be the password which user will create for himself. And then this is going to be confirm your password. Again, use the shortcut over here. F name. For this, I'll use end name. For this, let's say we'll use email. For password, let's say we can use password password. For this, we'll use pass2. Also, don't forget to change the type of the email address as email and the type of the password as password. So, when the user type in password, it won't display. It will come either as asterisks or dots. And now we will change the placeholders for them, which is enter your first name. And then for this, we are going to say enter your last name. For this email, we'll say enter your email address. For this, we will say create a password. And here we will say confirm your password. And then we'll save it. In Django, don't ever forget to use CSRF token just after a form. So I'll type in CSRF token and press enter. Actually, it is the Jinja tags which Django templates use. You don't need to go deep dive that what CSRF token is. Whenever you make use of forms in your Django app, remember to use CSRF token. Now for a form, we are going to have a button of type is equal to submit. We type in here button, press enter. Just type is equal to submit. I'll name the button as sign up. And then we are supposed to mention that what kind of method is a form using. So it will use post method. And action means that when we submit the form, what action will this form take? So for this action, we'll just route this URL to sign up. Let's also add PR tags over here just to add spaces. And then this. We will save it and then we'll go to our web app and click on sign up. So, this is how our form is looking like for now without any CSS. But if I 
fill this form and then submit it you can see that nothing is going to happen because it will just refresh on itself because we haven't any created a view or a function yet that what are you supposed to do when a user fills the form and clicks on sign up so for that let's come back to a views.py and write some code here so as you might be remembering that the method which our forms uses is post method so we'll type in here if request dot method equals equals post then do this so the first thing which we are going to do is that we'll take in all the fields entered by the user and store it in our variables so that we can play with them or work on them on a backend so the first thing was username let's name it as username itself and how are we going to take it or request it from the user so we'll type in request dot post dot get and then the name of that input tag which was username as you can see that in our sign up.html for username we made use username as a name variable and for first name we used f name for last name we used l name so accordingly we are going to do this in the views.py if you want you can write it like this and if you want you can write it like this too this dot post and then just this username anything will work well let's go with the second one for now so for the second thing first name we can f name go to request dot post f name I'll just copy this and paste it over here and replace F by L for the last name. And then the next thing is going to be email. So we request that to request or post. The name for the email was used as email. For password one, we use pass one. For confirm your password, we use pass two. Similarly, pass one. We can name it as password too because this is the variable which we are going to use in our backend. But for now, let's say we are using pass one request dot post pass one and similarly for pass two, which is confirm your password. Okay, so now we have taken all the input from the user in our backend. Now what we are supposed to do is that after the user submits all these inputs, we will register that user in a backend or that is our database. So for that, we will make use of a Django inbuilt library and we import it as by typing in here that from Django dot contrib dot auth dot models import user we'll save it and here we will say that we will create a user object let's say we can name it as now as my user is equal to user which is the model which we have imported from the contrib.auth models of the django here we will say that user.objects.create which means create a user for me whose username is username passed by the user and then the email and then the password well these are the three important things which we are supposed to mention over here and if you want we can also pass its first name by saying my user dot first name is equal to f name similarly we'll do it for last name my user dot last name is equal to l name and then we will save this user in a database for that we will say my user dot save now let's do one thing that when the user is registered successfully we shall show him a message that yes he was registered successfully for that we are going to make use of messages which is also an inbuilt library of django for that we'll type in here at the top from django dot contrib import messages and here just after saving the user we'll say messages.success 
success and then we'll pass in our request then we'll type that message which we are supposed to show to the user which is your account has been successfully created created and now what we want is that as soon as the user registers himself he or she should be redirected to the login page for that we'll type in here return redirect and then the url for the sign in as you can see that there is a yellow line on the redirect so what i'll do is just hover over here and we is will itself tell me the quick fix for this so i'll just click on quick fix over here and it will show me that from django to shortcuts import redirect comma enter i click on this and it is automatically imported for me okay so let's see that how is the app working for now i'll create a user let's say anu and then anu phv email one two three one two three then i'll click on sign up we can see that it will show an error because create takes one position argument but four were given that one thing which i just noticed is that instead of create we are supposed to mention over here create user so now let's see that how our app is working so i'll open this click on sign up enter a username and then the first name last name email address anything for now password 123 confirm your password 123 and then i click on sign up now you can see that it shows an error no such table as auth user so what we forgot to do is as you made use of this imported model so we were supposed to run make migrations and then migrate the changes so for that i'll just press control c on my command prompt and then i will type the command to make, run make migrations which is python manage dot py make migrations and then press enter and then i will say python manage dot py migrate so it has migrated all the changes and you can see that it has also migrated the changes of the admin and the auth in built models now what i'll do is i again run my server present to our server is running now and now i will open my browser click on sign up can fill the details anything for now password is 123 and then i'll confirm the password as 123 i'll click on sign up and then it redirected me to sign in and it displays nothing because we haven't created any template for sign in yet so what i'm going to do is just copy all this this copy all this code from sign up dot html and paste it in sign in dot html and remove all the last four inputs and for this i'll just log in using the username and then the password of the user so this is going to be something like this i is equal to password id is equal to pass one and the name is equal to pass one and we here we'll say enter your password and here we will say enter your username and then we'll change the name of the button use here the next thing which we are going to do is that we'll change the action of the form instead of sign up now this will go into the sign in view so we'll open view.py and we'll see that what our sign in view is doing it is doing nothing for now so now let's write some code for sign in which is that when the user will click on sign in it will log in the user for that now again we are going to do the same thing which is if request dot method is equal to post then run the following thing which is first we will take the username of the user 
as we are doing it, this in the sign in template first we are taking the username and then the password so we are again going to take those two things from the user in this function and the way to do that is username is equal to request dot post and then type in the name used for that input which is username here and password for the password and then we type the same thing for the password let's name it as password request dot post and then in the name password next we are going to do is that we will authenticate this user for that we will create a user object or a variable let's say user is equal to authenticate and to use this function which is an inbuilt function we need to mention this over here which is from django.contrib.auth import authenticate so that the django will authenticate this user and check that whether the password entered by the user matches as that of a database or not so we'll type in here the user name passed by the user and then password which is password given by the user okay and then we'll check that if user is not none this thing may either return a none response or a not none response it will return a none response if the user is not authenticated and if the user has entered right credentials this will return a not none object so which means if the user has given the right credentials and is already in our database so we'll log in that user for this we will type in login request comma user and again we need to import this login function so i'll just hover over it click on quick fix which will import from django.contrib.auth import login so this looks something like this now from django.contrib.auth import authenticate comma login okay so now as we have logged in the user but what if the user do not matches or the credentials are bad so for that we'll write else messages dot error request let's say bad credentials And we'll redirect this user to the home page. For that, we'll type in return redirect home. And similar to this user who has successfully logged in, we'll type in return render this HTML template. For that, we'll type in return render request comma app name slash the template name, which is index.html. And along with that, we will also pass in a dictionary, which is popularly known as context, which contains the first name of the user. So that we'll make use of this first name in the front end template, which will display a message like hello, first name of the user. So for that, we'll create a dictionary with the key named as f name. And for that, the value is f name. And for that, we also need to mention that what f name is. Which is f name is equal to user dot first name. As simple as that. Now we'll check that what happens in the app now. I'll refresh this. I'll enter the username of the user created by me for the last time. I'll again enter the password and enter one two three and click on sign in. And it do not displace the name of the user for now because we haven't mentioned it in the index.html file. So for that, what we will do is we'll open index.html and we'll mention I'll write an ginger tax percentage sign if user dot is authenticated, which is if user is logged in, then display the following things which is hello 
and then the first name of the user which we passed in as a dictionary with the key value named as f name and we'll show a message which says you are successfully logged in and to display the success error messages we also need to mention over here a ginger tag percentage sign for message in messages we we'll create a div over here with class alert and press enter and then the class of the alert will be alert dash message dot tags and then alert this missable fade show of which role is equal to alert and then we'll display it as bold with message and then the actual message from the backend which is going to be something like this and then a span with area hidden is glued true so that user can even close that message tag so i will write ampersand times let's stick it inside a button with type is equal to button not submit and class is equal to close in order to close this and data dismiss is equal to alert and the label of the area which is area label is equal to close and then we we'll end this button after this and okay that's in a phone and what happens if the user is not authenticated then we are supposed to show the sign up and sign in button option to the user and if the user is authenticated we'll just show sign out button to him and here we will mention s and then after that we would write in end if okay and as we have ended this if block we are also supposed to end the for block for that we'll write end for and this prints enter now let's see that how is the app looking like again into the username and above m the password one two three and then click on sign in now you can see that it says your account has been successfully created welcome to geeks or geeks hello and above you are successfully logged in and then there is a button to sign out but as i click on sign out nothing happens and it shows an error because nothing is returned in the sign out function for now so we'll open a view shot py we'll go to the sign out function and we'll remove this pass now what we will do is we'll just simply write in here log out request which will which will log out the current user which has requested for the same url and then we will say message this dot success request comma then the message which is log out successfully and then we'll return the redirect url to home to import this logout i just hover over here click on quick fix and then i'll import this logout now this looks like from django.contrib.auth import authenticate comma login comma logout and now let's see that how is the logout function working so i'll open the app again log in the user click on sign in and then i'll click on sign out now you can see that it successfully displays that user is logged out successfully and then displays the sign up and the sign in button but 
if the user is already signed in then it will not display the sign up and sign in button but will display the sign out button so that's how it works okay so this far what we have done is that a user will register himself on a website will then log in and can then log out from the system now what we are going to do is we'll implement the confirmation email functionality for our app and in order to implement the email functionality the first very important thing which we need is an email account itself for now let's make use of a gmail service so what you're supposed to do now is create a gmail account for your app or if you want to use an existing one you can do that too i have already created a gmail account for my app and the next thing which we are going to do is just open a new tab and search for less secure apps click on the first link and then make sure that you are signed into the correct gmail account and then allow less secure apps toggle on this button and that's it the next thing which we are going to do is open a vs code in the project directory which is gfg we'll create a new file called info.py which will contain the information about our email account so first thing we'll write as email use tls whether our email will use make which says which which says that whether our email will make use of tls or not the next thing is our email host for now which is smtp dot gmail dot com it depends on the service which you are using the next is email host user that is the gmail account for now it is cfg dot demo dot django dot login at the rate gmail dot com next thing is email host password type in my password over here with this dot password for now and then the port which we will use for sending emails which is 587 okay so now i'll stop this recording for one minute and i'll enter my password over here and you can enter your password according to your email so let's go so i've entered the password of my email in the info.py file and the next thing which we are going to do is we'll open settings.py and we'll mention all the email settings over here for that come on the top and just below this line write from dot info which is a file which we have made just now import star star means that import each and everything from here and now we'll give the settings for emails which is email use tls equal to the same thing email use tls the variable used in the info.py next is email host is equal to email host then we'll say email host user is equal to email host user next is email host password is equal to email host password email port is equal to email port simple okay so now what we are going to do is that in abuse.py we will write a function in such a way that it will send emails to the user but before doing that let's do some validations for the app which is like that if the username already exists in a database then the user will not be able to create another account with the same username so we'll write here if user dot objects dot filter where username is equal to username. We'll say messages dot error pass in a request comma username already exists or pretty exist please try some other username okay and the next validation which we can check is that if 
email already exists so similarly we will write if user dot objects dot filter email is equal to email and, and just after that we should not forget to return or redirect it to some other page which is let's say home page for now we will say messages dot error we pass in request and then the message which is email already registered and then again we will redirect it to the home page similarly the next thing which we can do is that if username is if the length of username is too big which is let's say the length of username cannot be greater than 10 or 15 characters for now let's say let's keep it to 10 so we'll write an if len of username is greater than 10 messages dot error pass in request and the message is username must be under 10 characters 10 characters also the next thing which we can do is that if the password and the second password which is confirm your password do not matches password 1 not equal to password 2 so we'll say messages dot error pass in a request and message will be passwords didn't match passwords didn't match Okay, and some other validation which we can have is that the username should be alphanumeric which is which means that it should either contains letters or numbers or both but nothing other than letters and numbers for that we can write if not username dot is num like if username is something other than alphanumeric then return this error message which takes in a request and the message will be username must be alphanumeric username must be alphanumeric and then again we redirect it to the home page okay now let's write some code to send the emails first let's try sending a simple email that can be a welcome message and how and which which will contain just a simple text how can we do that let's say i'll write this code for welcome email i'll first write the subject of the email which is welcome to let's say dfg Tango login and then I write in the message which is hello and then I must try writing the username or the first name let's say my user which is the object which we used my user dot first name And then we can say like add to exclamation marks and then for the new line write slash in then the next message can be welcome to dfg exclamation marks for the next line slash in and the same thing we can write thank you for visiting our website uh, website and in the next line I want a message that we have also sent you a confirmation email mission email please confirm your email address please confirm your email address in order to activate your account Okay, 
and then we can say something like thank you with two spaces thanking you and you, if you want you can write your name too let's say thank you Anubhav Madhav and then we'll send this email and for that what are the settings which we are going to use so the email account from which the email is to be sent is from email is equal to settings dot email host user and we are also supposed to import settings for this so for that we will write from the name of the project which is gfg from gfg import settings simple and then we'll come again and then we'll come back again here and the next thing is that to whom is the email to be sent so to list we can even send this to multiple users but for now we will send just to a single user at once so we will write my user dot email that is the email entered by the user on registration and then we will send the email for that we'll write send mail the subject the message and then the from email account which is from email and the receiver which is to list and then we will mention that fail silently equals to true which means even if the email fails to send then it will do not let our app crash okay but for the send email we need to import it i'll just hover over it i'll click on quick fix which will import send mail from django.co.mail import send mail so it will look something like this from django.co.mail import send mail and now we will save it for now we will again try registering our user for that i will run the server which is python manage dot py run server now our server is running i'll open the browser i'll refresh it and then click on sign up i'll enter the new username let's say anu one two three four first name is anubhav last name is madhav email now i'm entering an email which already exists so that i can show you that this is working let's say i will write here an email account and now as you can see that it is not displaying any messages over here because we haven't use those messages tags in the other templates other than index.html so i'll just go to index.html copy this part and paste it in sign up to test email and also in sign in dot html just after the body tab tab click here and press tab okay I refresh it and it here it tells that your account has been successfully created let's also say that during this after registering an account it will also say we have sent you a confirmation email confirmation email please confirm your account confirm your email in order to activate your account okay so i'll go back here refresh it server is running i'll refresh it now and here one thing which i notice it that instead of sign up i'm supposed to write sign in on sign in page i'll go to sign up i'll type in here sign in okay refreshed and this might have already sent up email to me so let me open my email app and show you that email received by me now as you can see but here is the email received by me just around two minutes ago when we registered the user and i click on this and it displays a message mentioned over there which means it says hello and above welcome to gfg thank you for visiting our website we have also sent you confirmation email please confirm your email address in order to activate your account but we haven't sent any confirmation email yet with a unique link so in order to do that the very first important thing which we need to do is that we need to generate a unique link how can we do that for that we can make use of a library called six what i'll do here is i'll close the server by pressing ctrl plus c and 
I'll install one more library named six for the command is pip install six. Now as the new library is successfully installed, I'll again run the server. And now I will create a new file in my app named as let's say tokens.py which will generate kind of tokens or a unique string for us. Here in tokens.py I will write from django.contrib.auth dot tokens which is the authorizing tokens generated import password reset token generator which is generally used to reset the passwords here we can make use of that in order to activate the account too now I'll write from 6 import text type and then I'll create a class named as token generator which will generate the tokens for us which is inherited from the class named password preset token generator inside that class I'll make a function which will make hash value it already exists in the password preset token generator class we'll pass in self the user and the timestamp Inside that function, I'll return text type user dot pk, which is a primary key, a unique code for the user. Just text type timestamp. So this is basically a unique string which will be used in order to activate the account of the user. Now I will just call this class. So in rate token is equal to token generator. That's it. The very next important thing is that I'll just open my views.py and here what we are doing for now is that our user is directly created and is active. But for now we will mention that my user dot is active is equal to false so that the user account will not be activated. We will active this account as soon as the user will click on the link. So now what we are going to do is we will write the code to send the confirmation email to the user which goes like let me write your email address confirmation email first I will take the current site which is whether it is working on localhost or wherever it is deployed it will take the domain of that website. So I'll write here get current site and then I'll pass in the request. I'll import this get current site, I'll hover over it, quick fix and here it is which is from shortcut import get current site. The next thing which we are going to do is that I'll write an email subject as we have already made use of the subject I'll use some another variable for this right now this email subject and the subject can be say confirm your email at gfg django login the next thing is the message this message to let's say because we have already make use of the message variable so message to is equal to We'll render this to string, render to string. We'll make a new HTML template, which we'll make a new HTML template. That email template will be sent to the users each and every time they request for the confirmation email. That is email confirmation dot HTML. And I'm not going to create this in the app directory. I'll just directly create this in the templates, not inside the authentication, but in the templates. If I'll click here on the templates, I'll click on new file and I'll write here email confirmation html. Before writing the html template, let's complete our email function. The next thing which we are going to pass is a dictionary which will contain the 
setting keys and values for the user the first thing which I'll show is the name of the user which, which is going to be the first name basically my user dot first name we'll display a message like that hello first name and then the domain of the website which is nothing but current site dot domain then I'll take the user ID which is URL safe base 64 and encode force byte my user dot primary that is pk okay then place a comma and import these things by hovering over it quick fix from Django dot template loader import render to string and the next is hover over this from Django dot utils http import url safe base 64 encode and then for four bytes we'll write that from Django dot utils dot encoding import four bytes we will also import one more thing which is force text and we'll make use of that later and after this I'll pass in a token which is generated by our token generator for that I'll write generate token dot make token and then my user so which means generate a token for my user using its primary key and timestamp I'll place a comma over here well this is not necessary if you want you can and then I'll import generate token by writing that from dot tokens import generate token is enter this is force bytes not force byte and now we are going to create the email object which is email is equal to email message email subject the subject of the email message variable which is message to then the host from which the email is to be sent email host user then the receiver which is my user dot email and then here are actually two commas one is to be replaced okay and then close it and then we'll write if email fails then fail silently is equal to true then send the email okay well what is this email message as we don't know we'll just hover over it click on quick fix and then we'll import from django.co.mail import email message comma send send mail and save the file also make sure of one thing that in a tokens.peep file it is from django.contrib.ot.tokens not token so now as we have implemented the function to send the email address confirmation email so now let's switch to HTML template for the email confirmation so let's click on this and what we are going to write in here is a simple text so for that we'll make use of auto escape and I'll just press enter and I'll put it as off so it means that it will not escape the HTML tags automatically so we can just simply straight away write simple text like welcome to Django login and then we can say hello then the username of the or the first name of the user and the variable for that is name so I'll write here name and then we can say please confirm your email by clicking on the following link something like you can see the confirmation link is here 
which will be http colon slash slash and then the domain of the current website which is given by this function the current site domain so we'll write it here the domain and then again we will just pass it to the url in order to activate the account so i'll make a new url named activate with the function name also activate and then i'll pass in the uid which is uid 64 is equal to uid which is nothing but this thing to get a unique token and then we pass the token this unique id will check whether the token is of the particular user or not and this is going to create the token for us and so now let's make this in a urls so i'll open my urls.py of the app and i'll make a new url named activate but here's something more special so in this thing i'm also going to include this uid which we pass over here like this uid b64 and then again the token and now i'm going to create this function in order to activate the account of the user so i'll come back to my views.py i'll make a new function called activate and i'll pass in request along with that i'm also going to pass those two parameters which i have passed in here which is the uidp64 and the token so it is going to be something like this along with the request we are going to pass in uidp64 and the token and then we are going to create a try and accept block so in the try we will say that uid is equal to force text so it is so force text is something like encoding the special tokens and checking that whether this token was given to that particular user or not so we'll say force text and then url save v64 encode no this time it's not encode this this is going to be decode and then we'll pass in the id we are also supposed to import this so i hover over this click on quick fix and from django.utils.stdp import this url save v64 decode and along with the encode as we did earlier okay so the next thing is i'll create the user object my user is equal to user dot objects dot get i'll fetch the single user of whose primary key is this particular uid okay and then in the except block i'm going to say that type error value error overflow error the user dot does not exist like if any of these error happens does not exist yeah. and if any of these error happens then i am going to say that my user is equal to none and then i will validate whether my user is not none and generate token dot check token we are going to check this of my user object and the token passed in through this function so we will say if this is true we can say that my user dot is active is equal to true that is we will activate that user as in during sign up we said that my user dot is active is equal to false that is we weren't activating that account just on sign up so as soon as the user will click on the confirmation link and if all the credentials like the user id and the token is correct then we are going to activate that account so after that we can say my user dot save as we have made the changes so we'll save it and then we'll log in the user so we'll say request comma and we'll pass in the user object which is my user and then we can return 
or redirect it to home page otherwise what we will do is we will just return render a new html template which will show a error message something like activation failed and for this i am going to create a html template in the root directory of my templates not within the app so i'll say activation fail dot html and within that i am going to write simply auto escape of activation failed please try again or anything like that you can choose your message on your own the other most important thing which we have missed is that in a views.py if you're not supposed to close this bracket here as we are passing this dictionary along with the template so we'll close this bracket here okay so now as we have completed the coding of our web app now let's see that whether our app is working perfectly or not so my server is running here and i'll open my web app let's click on sign up create a new username let's say no1433 first name last name the email address and then i'll create a password and then confirm it i'll click on sign up you can see that it says your account has been created successfully we have sent you a confirmation email please confirm your email in order to activate your account now let's check my email i'll refresh it i can see that i have received two emails which is one welcome to gfg and the other is confirm your email so which says welcome to django login hello and above please confirm your email by clicking on the following link click on the link and it says welcome to geeks for geeks hello you are successfully logged in click on sign out and it signed out me successfully so that's it this is our web app and the and the last final thing which we are supposed to do is that we'll create a super user so that we can access our admin panel for that we'll make use of a command which is python manage.py create super user so we'll type in python manage.py create super user press enter and then i'll give a username let's say anu press enter i'll enter an email you can get any email for now and then i'll create a password j123 then again the password then i'll press enter then it says that your password is too short do you want to bypass it i'll press y for now i mean yes so i'll press y and enter my super user is created successfully and now i can see this by going to the web app typing in slash admin okay our server is not running so i run my server now again go to this url which again ask me for the credentials of the super user which is anu and then the password and login i'll see the users so now i can see all the users which i have created in this video and the recent one to which is anu1433 so now our app is running successfully and we can sign out all right friends so this is how we create a perfect login system using django and that too in a very easy quick and simplest way you can access the complete code of this project by going on the github repository link will be given in description if you have any doubts or are facing any errors please write down in the comment section we will try to answer all your queries as soon don't forget to like comment subscribe and share it with your friends so that's it for today stay tuned to geeks for geeks for more such amazing videos thank you